community. We really want to know the best way to serve our membership and if organizational structure fits within a post-pandemic world. We are considering how we onboard new alumni and what type of programming and volunteer opportunities our alumni are interested in. As we embark on this new internal study, hint, new internal study, we will conduct surveys to gauge our members' thoughts. We invite all of our alumni, including our current students, especially graduate students, whoop, whoop, to share your ideas with us so that UBAA can best reflect the wishes of our members. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Hey, all those on social media. So, we've been talking about scholarships, we've been talking about what we've been doing, but guess what? We need you. So I'm not gonna call you out like they do in church, but if you are not a member, please, please, please consider joining. Because yes. all this, it takes people. That means you. You graduated from UCLA, you're going to graduate from UCLA, and for those who haven't graduated, guess what, your membership is free for the first three years. Hey. 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 And the next level is just, what, $50 per year. And you know what? If you're like, hmm, let me just do the life membership. Because if it wasn't for Mama, who said tweet, just do the life membership. I was like, oh, I'm broke. <laughs> but when I can, I will, and I did. So for $500, yeah. you can become a life member. And yeah. then, guess what? Every other year, your donations can go towards our scholarship. Yeah. So I'm between you, food, networking. So QR code in the back. Please consider joining. Just join. Uh, and volunteer, because we need you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, as y'all have heard us mention a bunch of times by now, this is obviously a volunteer organization. Like I said, we don't get paid in money, but we do get paid in camaraderie and satisfaction, because hopefully you will agree that this is some like, purposeful stuff. Yes. Um, but, you know, the relationships that we make are super fun. Like, we make great friendships, right? And all the relationships don't have to be platonic either. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. I mean, look around the room. This is a great looking crowd, right? It's not a bad pond to fish from. I'm just saying. So take, take from it what you will. Okay? The more the merrier. What they say, many hands make light work. So that's the cool part is more people join, it's actually less work. And guess what? As more people join, it becomes more fun. All right, because um, we ain't gonna pay, so we might as well have fun with it. Right? <laughs> All right, um, so let's ask about my, my take my bit. Uh, I'm about to bring up Bobby. Bobby's gonna do some recognitions. Again, please consider not only joining, but show up for something. Um, and I'm bringing up Bobby. Let's do it, Bobby. Yes. Let's go. So, <clears throat> 1923. Calvin Coolidge was president of the United States, silent cap. Also in 1923, four black people were lynched. You know that, that famous sign that the NAACP would put out and it was like a banner and it would say, um, somebody was lynched today. So statistically, uh, they only say that, that four people got lynched in 1923, but we know that the number was probably much larger. Also in 1923, the Rosewood Massacre. They only state that six black people died in that incident, but we know more upwards, probably about 150 black people lost their lives. That's a little bit of the backdrop of 1923. Also in 1923, separately, there was a group of black women that decided to start an organization at a predominantly white institution. And then a few months later, a black group of black men also decided to start an organization at a predominantly white institution. Now think about, in 1923, the audacity of these two groups to come together to start two separate all-black organizations that were supportive of black people in 1923. It's crazy, right? Like, you wouldn't, if, if they made a movie about it, you wouldn't believe it, that this happened in 1923. And we're fortunate to have 
both of those organizations here at UCLA, because both of those organizations were started at UCLA. So, Pi Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta started in early 1923, and then right behind them in April of 1923, we had Upsilon Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. So the, the end part of all that is that they have persisted at UCLA for over 100 years. Yeah. So not just that they started in 1923, but they persisted at a predominantly white institution where they weren't supposed to be there. Because remember, what's the backdrop of 1923? Folks are getting lynched. White people going into black neighborhoods, killing them in Florida. There wasn't hardly any black folks on the West Coast in 1923. The majority, in 1923, the majority of black people still live below the Mason-Dixon line. So when you put this thing in context, it's a great accomplishment that these two organizations made. So I'm going to call up uh, Kenya Yarbrough, and I'm going to call up Kevin Harbour, and we're going to present these in the of the UCLA Black Alumni Association. First, we're going to give uh, an award to Delta Sigma Theta Sorority High Chapter in recognition of the significant accomplishment that your organization made in 1923. Come on, Kenya! And then, uh, to Kevin Harbour, on behalf of Upsilon Chapter UCLA that started uh, chartered in 1923 on the UCLA campus. There you go. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to have first um, Kenya and, and Kevin get a photo, and then we'll do a, have the folks come down and do a photo op so all the members of the organization can get a quick photo op.